In this video, I'm going to be walking you through how I think about insulin in the inpatient setting. One of the hardest things, or the most confusing things that I ever um, was thinking about as a medical student was how do you dose insulin and, and how do you think about insulin? Because these patients, they always come into the inpatient setting. Um, they come on from the outpatient with metformin or some type of oral medication. And as soon as they come into the hospital, we stop that and we give them insulin. And I always wonder why. Why are you doing that if they don't need insulin as an outpatient? And the real reason why is because insulin is very titratable. So based off of whatever sugar you, you get, you may give lower or you may give higher amounts of insulin. With metformin or any type of oral medication, that's just not possible. That's not something that you do. Um, you can't give another tab or less tabs or whatever it may be, but with insulin, you can do that. So that's why every patient, regardless of whether or not they're on some type of oral medication or, or insulin in the outpatient setting, you're gonna throw them and give them some type of insulin. So the next thing is actually how do, uh, how do blood sugar checks work and, and when do you actually give the insulin? Because I think it's an important concept to, to think about when you're thinking about your long-acting versus your short-acting insulin. So um, the first thing is you have long-acting insulin like your Glargine and you have short-acting insulin like your, uh, your Lispro. Um, and short-acting insulin is broken down into preprandial insulin as well as your correctional insulin. And the first thing that I want to talk about is actually your long-acting insulin because I think that's the easiest one to think about. So long-acting insulin like Glargine is typically dosed at nighttime. So right before bedtime, you give Glargine and that will last all through the night and then through the day. Um, it's just dosed one time a day. You have other long acting insulins that can be dosed twice a day. You can even dose Glargine in the morning. But for simplicity's sake, let's just say you get your Glargine and it's gonna be dosed at nighttime. Now, on the flip side, you have short acting insulin, which will be broken down to prandial as well as correctional insulin. So let's just say we get checks every four hours. So just randomly every four hours, they're gonna get their sugars checked, okay? And if we're on just a correctional insulin, let's say we're only dealing with correctional insulin, their sugars may be 300, they may get 10 units. Um, if they're 250, they may get eight units, 200, they may get six units, 150, they may get four units, and so on and so forth. That's just an example um, table that you may have, but, but will be different based off of whatever patient you're dealing with. So that's how correctional insulin works. But prandial insulin is a little bit different because correctional, you're really just chasing. You're chasing whatever sugars they have and you're acting reactively. So what, their sugar spiked, so we give them more insulin. Their sugar spiked again, then we give them more insulin. Their, their sugar is not spiked, so we give them less insulin. Prandial is much different and actually how our body works. Whenever we eat, we're gonna get a sugar spike. And so we make more insulin based off of whatever our sugar spike may be. So. If we have a prandial insulin, let's say we have two units of prandial insulin every time, we're gonna always, or we're gonna give them the, the prandial insulin, we're gonna check their sugars before each meal, and we're gonna give them two units of insulin before each meal. And depending on what you order in your order set of how much sugar checks you give, um, you may wonder, well, prandial correction could be the same if we're only checking sugars before each meal, and you would be correct. But if you're, you're checking sugars randomly, like Q4 hours, that may not be the case, and especially when you have shift change, they may not always get their sugar checked before every single meal. So that's where prandial versus correctional really comes into play. If you want to have a much tighter control of your, your sugars, you're going to want to really dictate and set a certain amount of prandial insulin, and that's going to come into play in a little bit. But essentially, um, that's kind of, prandial is more of a set amount of insulin before each meal, correctional is just acting reactively. So now that we understand what long-acting insulin and what short-acting insulin is and prandial versus correctional, now you need to figure out how much insulin are you going to be giving. So really how we think about that is going to be a sensitivity scale. So at the bottom we have our, sens our resistant patients, at the top we have our sensitive patients. And how this works, it's going to be um, the units of insulin per kilogram per day. So this is just a conversion factor based off of how sensitive or how resistant a patient may be. Um, so let's say we have a patient who is very sensitive um, and very naive to insulin. We may have a conversion factor of 0.1 um, and they're 70 kilograms. So that means in the given day, they require seven units of insulin in that entire day. Um, now let's take another example. They're a, a little bit more resistant to insulin. So they have 0.5 conversion factor times 70 kilograms. 
That means in the given day, they're going to require 35 units of insulin. And so these are just going to be your average amount of insulin to kind of give you bearings. And you'll see how it comes into play in a little bit. But let's say we have that right here. Typically in the hospital, what you're going to be dealing with are these three numbers right here. 0.3 is going to be your sensitive patient, 0.5 is going to be your moderate, and 0.7 is going to be your resistant patient. So we'll see how all of those play in a little bit, but that's kind of the average amount of insulin that they'll require. So the next thing that we have to think about is, let's say we did our calculation and we got 36 units of insulin. We, we plugged in their weight, we chose a conversion factor based on whatever it may be, and they had 36 units of insulin. Well, 36 units of insulin, well, that is their 24-hour insulin requirement. That is both long-acting as well as short-acting insulin. So after that, what we have to do is we have to divide this in two, into our long-acting as well as our short-acting insulin. So you have 18 units of long-acting insulin, and that's gonna be things like glargine, and we have 18 units of a short-acting insulin, but this is also broken down into prandial as well as correctional insulin. So it'll be nine units of prandial, nine units of correctional insulin. And then your prandial insulin, because it's, it's before every meals, you're going to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So bef if this was the ideal situation and we wanted to give exactly what we calculated, they'll get three units before breakfast, three units before lunch, three units before dinner, and then they'll get their 18 units of long-acting insulin before night. And they'll, they'll have nine units of insulin to spare for their correctional. In practice, you're not going to be doing this, um, but this gives you a good a kind of a, a good basis to go off of, of how much that 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 average patient may require. On average, based off of their weight, this is what they'll require. But when you first start them off on insulin, you're never going to give them the full amount. You're going to give them um, much lower because you're not sure how they'll respond. It's much easier to give more insulin than take it away. But this gives you a good kind of guideline of how much insulin this patient may require. And typically, when the, I'm, I'm starting them off, I may give them a third. Uh, when it's their first day, I might give them a third of whatever I calculated. So this would be six units of glargine um, on the very first day. And I'll typically give them a long-acting insulin, a third of their long-acting insulin, whatever I calculated, plus a correctional insulin. And I'll just kind of start them off like that, see how they do throughout the day, see how much insulin they require, and adjust accordingly. And I'll show you a few examples of how I'll adjust it. But this is kind of gives you a good framework of, of how you think about insulin and how you think about the very initial dosing. So I usually give one-third of whatever I calculated. For more educational resources like our HP notebooks, check out medicalbasics.com. So these are the examples that we're going to work with. We have two examples, and this is really how we, how we think about adjusting long-acting insulin. In the next example, I'll actually show you how we think about adjusting short-acting insulin. But let's say this is our example right here. We have a patient that we're giving six units of glargine at nighttime. So they're always going to get six units of glargine. And the way that you figure out whether or not the long-acting insulin is uh, sufficient or it's too much is going to be on our fasting blood sugars. So our fasting sugars are going to be whatever our sugars are in the morning because at nighttime you get the, the long-acting insulin and then you don't eat anything. So in, in essence, you have fasted for that entire night. So your fasting sugars are going to be whatever they are in, in the very morning. Based off of that, if your sugars are too low, then you're gonna, then obviously that means you gave too much long acting insulin. And if your sugars are too high, that means you may have given too little amount of long acting insulin. So now I'm gonna show you an example of how we adjust our long acting insulin like glargine. So um, the simplest way to think about this is how do you give glargine? You, or how do you give any type of long acting insulin? Um, you're gonna be giving them like, glargine at nighttime. And then you're going to see how you respond based off of whatever their fasting sugar is. And their fasting sugar is their sh first sugar in the morning um, after they haven't eaten anything. So in, in essence, you have been fasting because you gave the long acting insulin, didn't eat anything all night, and this is what your sugar is. So, so the only thing that's affecting your fasting sugar is, should be your long acting insulin because all of these other things are short acting. All of your other insulin is going to be short acting. So in this situation, we gave some type of, we gave six units of long-acting insulin and it dipped their sugar down all the way to 100. Well, our goal for our fasting sugar is 140 to 180. So clearly we gave too much. So in this situation, 
I gave them six units of insulin um, for the long acting insulin. Well, now I'm probably going to want to decrease that. I might decrease the four. I might even decrease it lower. But in this scenario, well, now I gave them six units of insulin. But then their fasting sugar is 250, so that's still higher. So what I might want to do is I might want to increase that. I might want to increase from six units now up to eight units, and I'll keep everything the same. I'll keep all the all the correctional prandials the same because I only want to kind of make one change at a time, and it's all based off of their fasting sugars. So it's very easy to figure out how how you should adjust your long acting insulin because it's really all determined by your fasting sugar. In the next example, I'm actually going to show you how you can affect or how you can change your long-acting insulin. So in this first example, what I want to show you is how we adjust our long-acting insulin. So this is strictly going to be when you're dealing with some type of long-acting insulin like glargine. It's, it's the first thing you should always look at when you look at someone's sugars in the morning um, and, and figuring out whether or not their, their insulin requirements or, or their, their insulin is sufficient. So the way glargine is dosed is going to be at nighttime. So they're going to get, their, in this example, I chose six units of glargine um, at nighttime. So they got six units of glargine, and then how you figure out whether or not it's too much or too little is going to be based off your fasting sugar. They had given their insulin at nighttime, then they had all morning to fast, or all night to fast, and then whatever their, their sugar was in the morning, before they ate breakfast, that's going to be their fasting sugar. Our goal of fasting sugar is going to be 140 to 180. Um, and that's really the only thing that you're going to be looking at when you dose your long acting insulin. It's going to be based off the fasting sugar. So this fasting sugar is much lower. So it's 100. It's, it's much lower than our 140 to 180. So what I'm probably going to want to do is I'm going to want to decrease my, my glargine dose at nighttime from maybe 6 down to 4. In this situation, the fasting sugar is higher than whatever the recommended range is. So maybe I might want to increase from 6 to 8 units of glargine. So that's pretty simple actually. You're not going to change anything else because you kind of only want to make one change at a time. Um, but in this situation, our fasting sugar was too low, so we upped our glargine. And in this situation, our fasting sugar was too high, so we decreased our glargine. So now in this next example, we have a patient who um, has a fasting sugar of 160 and at nighttime they get six units of insulin, but then their, all their sugars are, are all over the place. And I just gave a few examples. Um, let's say their meal time was 400, 400, and 400. So what do you do in this situation? Well, the, the most important part is that you look at your long acting insulin, it's fine. We gave them six units and their, their goal is 140 to 180, so they're in the perfect range. So we don't want to adjust the long acting insulin. What we actually want to do is adjust the short acting insulin. So let's look at that right there. So we, we did our calculation and we said in the entire day they required 36 units of insulin. That was uh, maybe six units of long acting insulin and then 30 units of short acting insulin. So we do our little table. Um, remember, you still have 36 units as our 24 hour requirement. We do 18 and 18, and this is your long and short acting. Then we do prandial as well as correctional. Um, and then for meals, we have three units of insulin. So three units uh, for all the pre-prandial insulin. So for this patient, what I'm probably gonna wanna do is I'm gonna want to give them three units of pre-prandial insulin. Um, and then still keep them on a correctional insulin and see how they do off of that. The reason why this is important is because this guarantees that before every single meal, they're going to get three units of insulin and, and that will, will correct them. The other alternative would be maybe you can just increase their conversion factor. So, so maybe they were on a sensitive scale for the correctional scale. You can up them to to the, the moderate or so on and so forth. I like this approach much better because it's, it's a little bit safer. You're not chasing your, your tail. You're not chasing all the sugars. So that's kind of how I use the pre-prandial uh, um, insulin. I always give them some type of pre-prandial insulin on day two once I've actually calculated their, 30, their 24 hour insulin requirement and that's how I do it. Whatever their 24 hour insulin requirement is, I figure out what amount of pre-prandial insulin they should get and I give that before every single meal and that gives you a, a much tighter control um, um, and you can kind of see how I adjust the long acting insulin. It's all based off of the fasting sugar. So hopefully that helped a little bit. In summary, you, you have a certain amount of conversion factor. You calculate their 24 hour insulin requirement to give kind of your base of how much insulin you're going to give them on day one. Typically I give them one third of whatever long acting I calculate and give them some type of correctional and just start them. And on day two, I figure out 
whatever their 24 hour insulin requirement was. Um, and I, I adjust either their long acting or I can give them some type of preprandial insulin to kind of give them much tighter control. So hopefully this helps in, in, in dosing insulin for you. Um, and let me know if there's, there's anything um, that you do in practice that may be a little bit more helpful. Be sure to check out medicalbasics.com for more educational resources like our HMP notebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.